Hey everybody. Um, this is a quick uh, discussion of uh, some new approaches that I'm using in head turns. So there are tons of tutorials about head turns, um, but this one is specifically about how it's easy you can take a just a single three-quarter view of the character and make a head turn fairly easily. And I actually have three different characters that I did a little bit differently and I'll show you how I did those. So when I first started out with Moho, um, I started with the front view and um, did the head turn to the left and the right and spent a ton of time um, moving all the points for each of the views, both for the all the mouth points, the eyes, the points of the hair, uh, the ears, and all those issues of like as I turn to the left and to turn to the right, how the nose should change and uh, the ears going uh, in front or behind the head. And uh, there was just a lot of time that I put into that to kind of make it as uh, advanced as it could be. And that's really nice, but um, it does take a whole lot of time and effort. And for me, at least, I found that there was always an issue or two that was problematic. Uh, hair like this wild kind of hair was uh, difficult to, to kind of figure out how the points should move. And then there was the, like, the ears moving back and forth. Uh, in front or behind and those kinds of things were always uh, a bit challenging. Well later on when I was trying to just focus on animation itself uh, and create a number of different characters I started deciding just to limit myself to the three-quarter view and in that particular case I would do a, a simple head turn. Now just looking at turn left and right it, it seems uh, kind of jerky, but if you uh, follow good animation principles, you can actually uh, get a nice head movement. And you watch a lot of uh, uh, some kinds of animations, and they they use that type of head turn. But I always really liked uh, the smoother kind of head turn, and wanted to, to be able to, for it to face through the front. Okay, so my uh, first point about the head turns of the approach that I'm using now came when I realized, you know, I don't need to start with the front view. Instead, I can start with the three-quarter view. And when I do the head turn, instead of going, you know, completely to the other side, I can just move, move it to the front just by shifting the eyes. So as we look at this character here, I start with a three-quarter view, and then there's this bone called face front. Now I, I have a face front and a face down and a head turn, and I'll explain why that is in just a, a minute. But this face front bone is just going to move the head to the front. And I'm not going to do a lot of point movement. I'm doing some point movement in the hair, and I'll show you that. Um, but actually I'm doing some layer manipulation. So the technique for this head turn is that I will have this face to the front and then what I'll do is I will flip the head. So this part right here is actually flipping the view. Notice if I keep face, if the face front is um, all the way up so it's in the three quarter view, if I do the head turn bone it flips the head. That's really what's happening. It's flipping this particular bone here. So the smooth head movement will face to the front then flip the head and then face back to the three-quarter. So that's the basic technique um, and I actually have three different characters that I'll show that do it slightly differently um, just because I'm trying out different techniques or whatever um, different approaches. Um, this one here I've got to face front and face down. Um, here I just have the head turn and in, in the head turn itself as I'm uh, moving this head turn bone, I've uh, made it so that uh, it faces to the front. So I've changed that a little bit differently there. And then this, this character here um, uh, does the same thing as the first one, uh, just slightly differently. Now, of course, you could put this all in one action, um, but I like to have the separate bones here. And one thing to notice is that it is true that in the face front, I could use this for some front facing animation, but if you look really carefully, um, the shapes of the eyes 
and the mouth uh, are not really perfect for the front facing view. So this is not really how I would do it if I'm you know wanting to have a really nice front facing view. This is more um, just to make the animation look smooth. So if I wanted to have a really nice front facing view I might have that as a separate uh, head thing. Notice here I've got the three quarter right so you could have a switch layer and have um, the front facing view if you wanted to do that. Okay, so first let me show how I would animate this. So if I'm going to do that head turn, I would do the freeze, the pose. And if you're not familiar with that in Moho 12, underneath bone, um, freeze pose, it's control F. That's what I did was control F. So I freeze the pose, and then I actually go to wherever it is that I want the um, head movement to end, and I freeze the pose there. And after I've frozen the pose, what I'll do is I'll move the head turn so it's flipped. So that's uh, what's happened. So between the two. So right now it's just the rough, quick head turn. And so I just go into the middle, and what I'm going to do is face to the front right before that head switches. So notice that on frame 27, uh, the head hasn't flipped but on frame 28 it has. So on frame 27 I'm going to t face the front and move it all the way down. And now we have that smooth head, head turn. That's all we have to do for that. Now of course this one here I have a face down so I can also um, either at 27 or 28 have the face down move down some and then it will come back up. So we've got that little arc movement. Okay, And so that's all you have to do for the head turn. So let me show you how I actually created uh, the smart bones for the face front and the face down and the head turn. Alright, so let's bring up the head turn bone itself and the actions associated with that. I just used 24 frames for it. And all we're really doing is Notice here we've got the bone side flip. Uh, so we do the side flip for this main head bone. That's the bone that actually gets the side flip. Notice um, it's not red here. Um, the only thing that's happening with the head turn is we've got the angle going on. You can see by the red that that selected bone is turning. But here for this bone we see that we've got um, the, uh, a little bit of angle change so notice that once I flip the bone, once I flip it um, right here, I'm also going to move it off of this uh, neck bone just to position the head nicely um, relative to the neck. So I have a little bit of angle change, a little bit of position change just so it's relative to the neck. Um, but the main point is this flip the side bone. Or uh, flip the bone yeah, side flip, the bone side flip. Now the only other thing that I need to do in the head turn is that on the torso I also have uh, the neck and so the neck points need to shift a little bit um, as that head flips. So if you look closely it's mainly these points right here that I need to adjust to make sure that that neck looks nice as, he, uh, as you flip because I do have these points bound to the bone. And that's what I do for the head turn. Um, now the next thing we we'll want to look at is the face front. Okay, so let's let's find that one and go up here. Um, in the face front, all we see is uh, the only thing that's happening with the bones is that one particular bone is the only thing that's turning um, as we make that head move. Now notice that as these points are moving. Um, when it's fully facing front, the, the eye bones are still controlling the eyes appropriately, um, but they're offset a little bit. I don't worry about that because, again, this is mainly for that small transition time to make it a little bit smoother. So we're, um, you know, kind of cheating a little bit in terms of trying to make it. We're not trying to get the perfect uh, position at every single view. We're just trying to be able to move through that center uh, easily. 
But in any case, I'm just talking about that face bone, and it's the only bone that's actually moving or turning at this time. Um, the main thing that we're dealing with are, if we look at this, we've got, uh, now in this particular case, this head hair was something that I had in there. There's actually nothing being done. That hair is actually uh, on the face. So if you had another layer of hair on top, you might want to move those points, but uh, that just uh, is really not part of this character. Um, I thought it was at first, but I, I got rid of those points and moved them into the face. And now you can see that we do have some points associated with the hair. And so we do have some curvature changing and some movement. Now all I really do, typically I can select all of those points and then you can transform them uh, just squash them together and everything. Again, we're not trying to get a perfect position of everything. We're just trying to get it to look like this head is moving. And then, of course, for the hair back, we have that. Those points are moving. And notice I can actually move the layer itself or the points, whatever uh, works best for getting that appearance. Um, so I'm dealing with all of the points at once there. So those are really the only ones that are uh, points a little bit. Um, of course, we do have the shape of the face itself, which, again, I can do that um, point movement. Uh, but pretty much, it's, it's just like kind of squashing and maybe a little bit of tweaking or something like that. So not much movement. Um, and then we have the nose squashing in. And again, that's what I would say is focus on some of these transform uh, issues or the perspective points. So these kinds of things to make it easy to manipulate those points. And notice though that I'm not doing any layer changing. N no uh, shapes are changing in the layer. We're really just shifting them slightly. And so notice here that we don't have both ears showing at the same time. I'm not trying to get a perfect front view. This is really still a three-quarter view with the features shifted toward the middle of the face. So let's look at that shifting. So for the mouth, what we're doing is we're not uh, changing the points of every single mouth shape. Uh, here, it, the way that I'm using mouth to make it, the, again, as easy as possible, and uh, I'm trying to really focus on the animation and not spend so much time uh, actually creating the characters because I do this more as a hobby. Um, here I use the switch layers and so here we are just moving the layer and squishing it um, and uh, transforming it to look a little bit more like it's uh, facing in the front. And same thing for the eyes. I Mainly for the eyes I'm just moving them to the center of the face and uh, then for in this particular character the way that I did it I didn't move anything with the left eye but I do move the right eye I stretch it out a little bit because again when he's facing in the three-quarter view this eye is a little bit more squashed um, so I stretch it out a little bit and I set the spacing uh, a little bit differently um, so that's all that I do in order to get this head face look like it's facing the front. Now for the face down uh, bone we do a very similar kind of thing um, and all that I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate uh, the points in the face, um, the eyes. Now here I have a left eye and a right eye. You could do things differently. Um, but this just again allows me, having both the left eye and the right eye allows me to separate them um, as I uh, am moving for uh, moving this uh, face front bone. Um, but I have noticed that I'm just doing a layer transformation to move those eyes down and the same thing for the mouth. Uh, just a layer transformation moving it down and then doing a little bit of squashing of the points. Now if we look at the bone layer, notice that there aren't any other bones that are moving. Um, one technique that you can do though as you're trying this movement of the face, the face down is really not intended um, for when he's looking to the left or right. So what you can do 
is you can move this face front uh, bone all the way down for the time just so that when you do are doing the adjustments on the mouth and the eyes you can move them and it looks more natural you see uh, where they will wind up um, but then make sure the one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you delete that movement of the face front in the end so that's how I do both face down and face front and that's how I get that smooth motion for this particular character. Now this um, Tracy character is very similar to the other character in the sense that I did the same thing for the face front um, but I don't have a face down and so as I turn uh, left or right uh, it looks going there's not not that arc movement so all I have to do here is I can go into that face bone and just drag it down a little bit in the middle now since I did the freeze pose um, it sets it back um, uh, to moves it back to the upper position so it's always a good idea to the way I do animations is I freeze at the start of the moment uh, of movement and freeze at the end of the movement and then I come to the middle and make any adjustments that I want to get that arc type of movement so you really don't need that um, face down movement uh, that uh, uh, bone that's just another thing that you can do but um, if you don't have the time um, to do that you can just move that bone down now another thing to show about this Tracy character in the fra uh, face front view in this particular character I have uh, I don't have a left eye and a right eye I've just got one um, one group layer for the eyes and so um, I do just move that layer down I, I'm and excuse me I move that layer um, across to the middle of the face but I do uh, do a little bit with the brows uh, and the pupils so that I can um, move them uh, the points a little bit with respect to each other so and of course if you're um, really focusing on the pupils where they happen to be you know notice I've got them uh, they're more of an ellipse when they're looking at the three-quarter view and close, closer to a circle um, in the middle view um, so and again where the center of the pupils are in the iris so all those kinds of things you can tweak if you want but the key point is again we don't have to go for that perfect movement because it's going to happen very quickly this is really just to provide that smoother head movement more easily and as you can see the mouth uh, for example uh, I just all I have done is shifted it to the middle of the face the last character I'll show is this Kim Possible kind of character and um, all of the movements are done in the head turn bone uh, for this character um, and so in that particular situation I actually other than the head turn uh, rotating I do have this bone that controls the eyes and this other one that controls one of the eyes uh, I do have those moving a little bit notice that um, this um, eye that's her right eye uh, that bone does move position a little bit as we're moving um, and the same thing for this um, eye that the bone that controls both the eyes um, so because I'm doing it all within one uh, one bone and moving the eyes that's just a, a, a choice that I did here and of course uh, the eyes and the mouth are moving as the head turn uh, moves and again I'm doing layer transformations that's the another big key so anyway that's it um, I, I'm not sure which of them I prefer the best but maybe it's this one with the face front and the face down um, I think separating the actions by the different bones is what I personally prefer but hopefully that's helpful to you again the main keys or to think about starting at a three-quarter view and just have one bone uh, move the head to the front and just use um, layer transformations on on the um, eyes and mouth and then some point transformations on the outline of the hair itself so um, I hope that's helpful to some people and have fun animating